So this problem relies heavily on the graph that I've drawn again. And so it's important that we recall which variables are aligned with which axes. So this is a velocity versus time graph. And that means questions about acceleration can be handled in terms of the slope of this curve, questions about velocity in terms of the height, and questions about distance or change in distance, total distance traveled, net displacement, all those sorts of things can be handled in terms of the signed areas of this curve. So we'll just get started with part A. It asks about acceleration and as we said acceleration is about is a question about the slope. So the acceleration at 7.5 we're going to handle in terms of the slope this straight line as I go from 7 to 8. I've put in some of the useful formulas for us to use on this uh, on this problem. So we'll use this y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 formula, remembering that y is just a generic indicator for the variable associated with the vertical axis and x for the variable associated with the horizontal axis. In this case, the vertical axis is velocity, and so what we're really talking about is V8 minus V7 over 8 minus 7. Uh, that's going to be um, 0.2 minus 0.3 divided by 1. So what we're going to have is negative 0 0.1. Now, as far as units, we've got, in the numerator, we have miles per minute. I'll just use abbreviations to save space. In the denominator, we have minutes. And so our units are miles per minute divided by minutes. And that means miles per minute squared. Part B is asking a question about the meaning of this indefinite integral. From 0 to 12, the absolute value of velocity as a function of time with respect to t. And that represents total distance traveled. from 0 to 12. And we can, to find this from a graph, we can sum the absolute value of the signed areas from t equals 0 to t equals 12. So let's just do that. We're starting here. From 0 to 2, we have a triangle here. And so that is 1 half two times a height of 0.2. And we want the absolute value of that. Then we have another triangle from two to four. That's two. But our height is negative two, negative 0.2. And we're going to want the absolute value of that. There's no area, no signed area from 4 to 5. And from 5 to 12, we can break this up into three parallelograms. That's why I've written this parallelogram formula over here. Remember, the basic idea is that if you can find any two parallel sides, then you take the average of them multiplied by the distance between those two parallel sides. So in this case, this first parallelogram, I'm going to write in our 
signed areas so far that we've had. This first parallelogram, we've got a distance of 2, a distance of 1. So that's the average of 2 plus 1 times the distance between those two is 0.3. And we're taking the absolute value of that. So what have I got? 2 plus 1, 3 halves times 0.3. That's going to be 0.45. This next one, I've got two parallel sides here. They're, they're vertical. So it's the average of 0.3 and 0.2 times the distance between them, which is 1. Absolute value of 1 ha half 0.3 plus 0.2 times 1. And that is going to be 0.2. Two five, and finally the absolute value of this last area. These are the two parallel sides, one a length of four, the other a length of three. So I have the absolute value of one-half, four plus three, and the distance between those two parallel sides is 0.2. And that's going to give a signed area of 0.7. So we add up each of those absolute values and we're going to get 1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.85, 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.8. Now as to the units, we're multiplying miles per minute times minutes. And so we have miles per minute times minutes. These minutes cancel out and so it's 1.8 miles. Part C is asking for when the person returns uh, back home to get that all-important calculus work. And so returning home is tantamount to saying it's a velocity question, okay, uh, is the same as the velocity changing from positive to negative. plus to minus and that we can see from this graph occurs right here at t equals 2. This is where the velocity goes from plus to minus. So part D the distance to the school is a net displacement problem. For Karen, that means the definite integral from 0 to 12 of her velocity as a function of time. For Larry, it's the same calculation except for his velocity as a function of time. For Karen, so we sum the assigned areas. from 0 to 12. And we're going to get 0 0.2, negative 0 0.2, 0 0.45, 2 .5, 0 0.25, and 0 0.7. And that gives 1.4 miles. For Larry, 
we're going to evaluate this numerically. So let's go to the calculator. Now just to save a little bit of time in the video, uh, I'm always going to put it in at the Y1 and so let's just put that in it's pi divided by 15 and then we multiply by the sine of pi over 12 times the time but in this case we're inputting time as x so that's our function. We're in radian mode, and so we simply need to find the indefinite integral using the finint function. We jump down to f, we scroll down to finint, and we're going from 0 up to 12 and our function is y1 and lastly we're integrating with respect to time really but since we put in time as x we're going to say that's x we get 1.6 miles and so we evaluate that numerically it comes to 1.6 miles. I think this is a good problem to remind ourselves about the difference between total distance traveled and net displacement. Net displacement wants to know how far it is from one position to another, in this case from home to school. Total distance traveled, on the other hand, is about both forward and backward motion counting in an accumulative sense. That's why we use the absolute values. At any rate, we can see that Karen is closer to school than Larry. And that's what they actually asked for. Closer to school, sorry, than Larry.